Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 1586, written by Anonymous, facing the unthinkable. Last year, I was dating this really messed up guy. One of the many things that made up his personality was his hatred for all things Christian. I wasn't much of a believer in God myself, so that didn't bother me. One night, we were on the phone really late. I was laying in bed on my side when I got a very strong urge to roll over and look behind me. It felt like someone was standing there. Then I felt really tired, and I didn't remember anything until about an hour later when I woke up to my boyfriend crying. Not only was it strange for him to show any emotion, but he was praying too. I asked him what was going on and he proceeded to tell me that I had been possessed. Apparently in that hour when I thought I was asleep, my voice changed. He described it as taunting. He told me I kept teasing him and trying to say hurtful things, talking about myself as if I was someone else and growling. He told me I called him a C word, which happens to be my least favorite word. Then he told me something that literally gave me goosebumps. He said that I said, I'm going to come see you every night. Does that bother you? The next day I told my very religious mom, and she insisted I go to someone who knows about these things. A few weeks later, I met with a woman who only made my fears worse. She had me close my eyes and tell her everything that popped in my head. There was a weird process that ended with me seeing whatever was in my room last night. That's when I realized I've seen it ever since I was a little girl. I used to always go to my parents' room in the middle of the night, and it would always be standing in the shower. Also, I saw it in my backyard a few times. After the session with the professional, things just got worse. One night when everyone was asleep, I was going downstairs to get a drink and I saw it. My stairs opened up to my living room and as I was almost at the last step, I saw it. Not for a split second or out of the corner of my eye, I saw it as clearly as I would see anything else. Probably 30 seconds went by with us staring at each other before I fainted. When I woke up, it was gone. I haven't seen it since, but I think it's seen me. Case notes for file 1586, Facing the Unthinkable. So in a sense, facing your demons is something that every person eventually has to come to terms with. But facing them in a literal sense of demonic possession? <laughs> that's another level entirely. And I'm trying to contemplate how I would personally react in a situation like this, where you black out for an hour, you think you just fainted or went to bed, but no, in reality you were possessed for that entire hour. You like to think that you're pure or strong and you could resist that kind of possession, whatever it might be. Maybe you can't, I mean, you won't know until it happens to you, if it ever does, and I hope it never does happen to any of us, for sure. But it's natural to want to believe that you'd be strong enough to resist that. Maybe most people wouldn't, and it's not really their fault. How would you react after the fact, especially if the demon possessing you did something horrific? What about all the people in prison for murder or something like that? Are there a lot of people in there that shouldn't be because it wasn't really them, they were possessed? Well, I guess it's hard to say because if that did happen to you, would you go around telling people, telling the court and the judges and the lawyers that, no, I was just possessed? Well, maybe if you're trying to cop a uh, insanity plea, but <laughs> if it really did happen, at least to your perception, I don't know. Maybe if someone took a video of you crawling on the ceiling, you know, that would give some credence, but I don't think we have any of those videos going around that are legitimate. Although then you have to ask, was a demonic possession purely limited to an hour, or was your soul able to eventually reject it? Maybe initially it couldn't, but after an hour or so, it was able to push it out. So that's a half and half answer. You couldn't fully reject it, but you did eventually. Or is there just a limit to how long a demon can possess us for? Case file number 1587, written by Mr. Zana, The Day the Woods Came Alive. This one time around 2007, I was about 13 and in 8th grade or 7th. There is a park fairly close to our school, so me and my mates would walk over there after school hours to just chill. We did this until we graduated. My mother was a teacher at the school, so we all had rides home. Well, around the western side of the park were these dense woods. There was a walking trail around the park with a creek that crossed right through the middle, making bridges and into the dense wood-like area. We would look for crawfishes in that creek until one day, 
we decided that we were going to go find out where the creek ran from. So they decided to follow the creek back into the woods. Well, see, I had a new pair of Converse. I loved them and was not getting them torn up or messed up due to the water, so I stayed behind. I was waiting along the bank while they eventually faded into the woods. I leaned back and was watching the clouds when I heard a rustle from the woods. I thought nothing of it at the time because it was only a subtle sound. As I kept hearing it, I figured it must have been birds in the trees, but I realized it was unusually quiet. No birds were chirping. There was a highway nearby, I figured cars would have been going by, but there was nothing. No wind, birds or cars, just me, my breathing and rustling. So I look over to where the rustling was and saw nothing but the green of the trees in the dense area. There was a bush further back that for some reason stood out as it was unnaturally green. Keep in mind most of this area was only pine trees, so it was fairly dark green. I took a moment to really look at it and I swear as I was watching, the more I looked, the more I could make out a face and legs. Thinking this was just another one of those cases where you look at something like a cloud or ink plot and can make out faces out of it, I thought nothing of it and leaned back down to relax because it was peacefully quiet. I couldn't get the thought out of my head though. It became to the point I felt being watched. I leaned over on my side to try and look at it from a different point of view but still saw the face and hands. This next part freaks me out. In fact, typing this just sends shivers but I can't help it. The thing stood up, turned around and walked further back into the woods. I was scared crapless. Afterwards, it felt like the world was on a jump start. Cars started going by, birds started up chirping and the wind began to pick up a little more. My mates came back and were like, dude, there's a rather big pond back there with some brim around it. It was cool. I couldn't say much. I was still stunned. They said they thought I'd seen a ghost. <laughs> the thing looked just like another piece of scenery until it literally got up and moved. It didn't phase into the trees. It turned around and walked. Just the way it walked back. That rustling sound was more ambient and made a thud whenever it stepped down. Freaking weird. Quesant Safal, 1587. The day the woods came alive. When reality is described as being muted, the sounds and visuals of the world are dampened. That is, I think, when you know that you're in a dead pocket server. That and also no other human beings around, or any animal life at all. Even the wind is slowed down. Now in these dead pocket servers, I think at any given time, there's maybe a few hundred, maybe a few thousand people in totality, if everyone that dies goes to the same buffer world, so to speak, maybe there's different ones, but if there's just a singular one where everyone goes, then in the entire scope of the planet, there's a few hundred to a thousand people. So that is nothing. You'll never meet someone, almost certainly never meet someone else. But maybe you will. Maybe this was another person trapped. And maybe you perceive them almost as blending into the environment. The other possibility is this was some sort of game master and charged of facilitating the transfer, observing you, making sure nothing bad happens to you along the process. Because maybe if you die there in the pocket universe, your own data is corrupted or something along those lines. This is total speculation, but it's, I guess it kind of fits. And now time for the quote of the day. Well, if crime fighters fight crime and firefighters fight fire, what do freedom fighters fight? They never mention that part to us, do they? George Carlin. The thing we declare war on, or the thing we say we're fighting for, is typically what we're fighting against. <laughs> Branding is so important for the normal person. It's the same thing as the Patriot Act for bills passed in the US or most places. To fool the public, they need a proper sounding title. And total destruction of your right to privacy and due process is not a very good catchy sounding title, is it? But Patriot Act, now that sure is. So always be wary of the title of anything you're reading. If it's fiction, if it's an article, if it's a bill in Congress, if it's what a group calls themselves, always dig deeper beneath the surface because that's where the truth is. Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell. Kinetic Symphony signing off.